All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Joint Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee meeting for January 24th. It's uh, 10 04 a.m., so we'll begin. Call the meeting to order. Um, I'm Mike Jirasi, the supervisor for the town of Horicon, and as most of you know, this is my first chair as the of this committee, so I appreciate everyone's guidance and assistance as we move forward. And I'd like to welcome uh, our committee members as well. Um, let me just do a very quick roll call. I see uh, Supervisor Driscoll is in here and Supervisor McDevitt. And we've got Supervisor Bramer, Supervisor Sieber, uh, Supervisor Dickinson had to leave for another meeting. Um, and Supervisor Diamond, on or not? No? Okay. The, the first thing I like to do is, uh, as you know, uh, the chair of the board on last Friday uh, mentioned that uh, the chairs of the committees can select their vice chair and, and second chair. I'd like to offer that opportunity for our committee members uh, based on your interest and availability. And um, if you'd like to self nominate yourself or somebody else, but I, I'd rather all of you made a decision who should be the vice chair. Uh, certainly you've all been doing this much longer than I have here and, and the second chair. So let me throw that open to the committee and get your opinions for vice chair for this joint committee. Anybody? Thoughts? Hi. No offers? Supervisor Bramer? Thank you, Chairman. I am um, sorry about my video here with the sunshine. It's an interesting proposition that you put forward, and um, I'm not seeing a lot of hands jumping up. I'm happy to serve as your vice chair if no one else is interested and you're willing to have me. Any other opinions? Any other nominations? I, I, Supervisor McDevitt? I, I would be happy to uh, uh, leave that to your discretion and your choice and uh, just let you let you be the master of ceremony. <laughs> okay. For your, for your, well, for your <clears throat> all right. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, yes. So I, I would just, um, if uh, Supervisor Bramer uh, is <clears throat> at this point is the only one who has expressed interest, um, uh, Let's uh, give her that opportunity. Uh, I don't know if it, it needs to come to a uh, uh, a second or or how that uh, that goes. But let's um, you know let's uh, do that today and and uh, and afford that opportunity to Supervisor Bramer okay. to be the uh, <clears throat> good agreed Supervisor Bramer. Thank you for your offer and as uh, serving as the vice chair of this joint committee. I appreciate it. Look forward to working with you. Sorry. You're on mute, but I think you said. Yep. So I'm happy. looking forward to working with you too. Thank you and the rest of the committee. All Appreciate right. You. Terrific. Thanks so much. Uh, first order of business to the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Hopefully, you had a chance to review that. Supervisor McDevitt, second by Supervisor Driscoll. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, signify aye. Aye. Control aye. It. Okay, Carrie, thank you. Uh, we'll open the uh, meeting with the uh, district attorney's agenda. We have one action item. Uh, yes. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if this is working. From that at all? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I have one, only the one item on. Uh, there's an op a, a grant opportunity. This is not a new opportunity. This is something that we've um, relied on in the past, and I think many of you are familiar with it. Um, and there, I think uh, on January 11th, there was a request for applications that, that went out uh, around the state. And so basically I'm here seeking permission to make application for this funding. They don't set a specific amount. That's sort of how it's been traditionally. They give awards. It is competitive. Um, 
our office has uh, in this county has benefited through the our uh, victim assistance program which supplements the attorneys in our office in dealing with victims of crime so uh, where the funding would go for our office if if the application were approved and you agree to permit us to make application is it would be used towards direct services to victims of crime we have currently two people that work full-time on that uh, and that's their sole responsibility uh, it's it's a terrific resource it's something that uh, we lean heavily on that that aspect of our office it is uh if you look inside the proposal there is a, some match requirements those match requirements as far as i know at least as far as since i've been da have been present i will tell you that they were waived during covid and if you read this it appears they're going to be waived uh next year their year, unfortunately, I wish everyone was always on the same year, January 1 to <clears throat> December 31st. Theirs is, it starts in October. Um, it does mention that. Now, so let's talk about the match. What we've been fortunate is they do permit um, in-kind match, so it doesn't have to require necessarily county dollars. For example, space can be given credit. And uh, we dedicate, obviously, a lot of space towards our victim program and to meeting with victims. Uh, the other thing is interns. Uh, there is, they set the value of volunteer work in, in the form of interns. We've worked, but again, other than COVID, which really uh, had an impact on being able to be, bring people in, uh, and I suspect that's why they've, they waive match for those years and plan to waive for the year going forward. Um, but we utilize interns, so they, you get a lot of credit. There is some expense, even if we were able to meet all of the match, the way it works is the director of the program for the um, for Warren County, five percent of their salary cannot come from the grant money because they say that's not that's to basically apply and administer the grant. Um, I think in the last couple of years, uh, it's been approximately, and I'm I'm going from memory around 150 thousand a year that we've been fortunate to receive, and not to belabor this, but I'm really hoping that uh, you'll permit me to make application again. One motion uh, to move this to the floor by Supervisor Driscoll. Second, any questions, comments, discussion on the issue? All those you, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. Was sure. that, did you Please. have a second on that already? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. Repeat the question, please. I think I covered you. Did you have a second to the motion? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. I'll take my hand down for that then. Um, I had a question for discussion. Go if right I may, Mr. Chair. Um, may I may I address our DA? Yes, go ahead. Um, District Attorney Carison, I just had a quick question about it. Number one, um, so to the extent possible, all that match money will just be in kind and not be third party. So the only third party money coming out is to that percentage for the director. Is that correct? Well, that's the goal. Um, I, I don't think I can say that without knowing you know that right now we don't know what the award would be but uh if you look inside the way the program set up that's the way we've historically been able to do it and and i i'm not aware of anything that would change that um i do know that there's a requirement in and i'm reading these application papers that there is financial monies available um so i think i don't want to speculate on why but we have, I, I think we'll have the space and the interns so that we can make, cover that match without financial um, monies, if that's what you mean. Yep. The, may I ask another question, Mr. Chair? Proceed. Sure. Thank you. Um, Dia Carousel, the other thing that changed last year was an ability now to have paid interns. And I know that the VOCA dollars funneled through OVS will in fact allow for payment, um, you know, that salary towards interns. So in the past, I'm aware you've offered them for credit, but I do think it's an opportunity for maybe not all, but some of your interns to utilize some of those dollars towards paid internships, which might also be helpful for you. But I just, that is a, a more recent change in our internship policy and being familiar with the VOCA and the OVS guidelines, I just wanted to bring that up and hopefully you'll, you'll take advantage of it. Yeah, thank you. Um, one of the things I, in reading through this, it looks like that they're requiring a at least one volunteer they're calling it a volunteer but i see that as an intern I, and i think the way they're classifying it is unpaid but certainly if if granted permission to go forward as we de 
get deeper into this application process. Whatever opportunities are there, we're going to we're going to seek them out. Uh, but no, I agree. Um, in I think you've been a big advocate of interns, and and we've been lucky to be able to utilize them over the years. Any other questions or discussion? All right, we had a motion to approve by Supervisor Driscoll, second by Supervisor McDaggett. All those in favor, signify aye. 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 Opposed? Carrie, thank you. Great, thank Sir. you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. There's no uh, discussion items listed. Any referrals or pending items? There's none listed? Uh, not for me. Okay, thank you. Privilege of the floor. Is there anybody online? Any comments? Anyone present? Seeing none, except the motion to adjourn this portion. Oh, okay, disregard. We'll move on to the uh, probation agenda. Ask the director of probation, please. First order is to approve the minutes of the uh, prior meeting. We already did that as well. Okay, right. that's fine. All right, we have uh, two action items I'd ask. Please proceed. Thank you. Good morning and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have two action items. The first one is to fill a vacant position. The senior account clerk position in our department is going to be coming opening. We had a recent uh, promotion for our current senior account clerk to probation assistant. So that will indicate or cause an opening in that position. And that position uh, handles the bulk of our reception duties as well as the restitution and other financial obligations that we have within our department. Uh, which have to do with collecting DWI, DWI administration fee, restitution, and drug testing. So moved. Second. Second. Second by Supervisor Driscoll. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. Second item? Second item is uh, more of a housekeeping uh, item. Uh, during the budget process, uh, we took over the monitoring of ignition interlocks of conditional discharges from the district attorney's office. Uh, the ignition interlock law went into effect in 2010. Since that time, probation has monitored probation. Uh, DA has monitored conditional discharges. Uh, this year, we're taking that over from the district attorney's office. So we'll be monitoring uh, CDs as well. And as a part of that, that's an additional responsibility that we put on an individual in our office. And during the budget process, we came up with a $3,000 per diem for that individual to do it. As it turns out, per diem is not the proper terming term. It should be a stipend. So what we'd like to do is to change the salary schedule uh, from probation per diem 3000 to probation ignition interlock device transfer monitoring stipend of 3000 effective January 3rd of 22. So we're just changing the wording. Uh, so the individual doing the work can get paid. I'll make that motion. Motion by Supervisor Sieber. Second. Supervisor McDevitt. On discussion? Questions? Comments? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Any further uh, discussion items? None listed. Any Pending items or referrals? I see none. Privilege of the floor. Anyone online? Anyone present? Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Move to public defender. I have one item uh, to start with the agenda request. Um, with permission to enter into a contract with Office of Legal Services for distribution number 12. As you may recall, 57% of my county budget comes from ILS, um, which is the Office of Indigent Legal Services. Um, <coughs> number 12 pays for a salary for one of my support staff. Um, it started as distribution three, it became distribution six, it became distribution nine, and now we're requesting to make it distribution 12. They're good for three years. So I respectfully request that we can proceed with this. Okay. Motion to move this request to the floor. 
Supervisor McDevitt, second. Supervisor Driscoll, any discussion, questions, comments? Seeing none, motion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. There is a request for an executive session. Yes, please. Motion to move to executive session, Supervisor Driscoll, Supervisor McDevitt. It's on a personnel matter. All right. We'll move to executive session for a personnel matter. Aye. Well, is, our, is our county attorney there? He's yes, right. supervisor. Uh, should there be more of an explanation on why we're going to executive session, or is that sufficient? The executive session should be under open meetings law, section 105F, to discuss personnel matters. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. All right. A motion to uh, proceed with the uh, Public Safety Committee. We're just uh, one announcement before, Chair, before we start with you. The, uh, as you know, we just came out of executive session and the, the uh, committee members were notified, uh, unfortunately notified, by Public Defender Marcy Flores that her intention is to retire in the near term, in the coming months. Uh, every committee member feels the same about your leadership and your professionalism, your performance, your staff. And uh, we wish you certainly the best at the same time, absolutely uh, disappointed in this uh, announcement. And there'll be much more discussion about this. The good news is you're, you're here uh, now for the uh, at least next few months. So we'll have time to uh, certainly provide you the tribute that you need in due time. But thank you from all of us. I'm, I'm sure I speak for the entire board that we greatly appreciate your service. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to uh, public safety portion. And Sheriff Lafar. Good morning. Floor, floor is yours, sir. Item number one is a request to enter into an agreement with NEC that is for maintenance and service of our agency landlines. It is a new agreement. However, it's only new because we didn't have the ability to renew. We've been working with NEC for a number of years. We're satisfied with their, their service and their increase was minimal. So that's a request for a new contract with them. Motion moves to the floor. Supervisor Driscoll. Second, Supervisor McDevitt, any discussion, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Second item. Item number two, three, and four, they are all relating to Nova Time, the scheduling service, timekeeping for the county. We have not been utilizing Nova Time in our sheriff's office to the fullest of its capabilities, and that has been due to some struggles that we have with scheduling. 24-hour employees, shift swapping, Nova Time has not been able to accommodate us to this point. We've been working with Rob Lynch in the treasurer's office, and we are heading in a direction to have some updates done to the Nova Time system. And the request number two is to, actually two, three, and four, is to allow them to provide the updates to our county software that would help us to, and then to account for the funding. It's going to come out of a contingent fund and these are all requests that were drafted by Rob Lynch and provided to me to provide to you. Okay, motion to move numbers two, three, and four to the floor. I'll move it, but I do have a question on discussion or a comment. Okay, we have a motion by Supervisor Sieber, a second? Second. And Supervisor McDevitt. Go ahead, Supervisor Sieber. Thank you. I just wanted to note that this, this was an ongoing process from what I understand for several years, but last year a lot of time was spent between the sheriff's office and the county treasurer's office trying to coordinate this and also really make, make all of this um, happen as soon as possible. So I wanted to not just compliment the sheriff's office for their hard work on it, um, but also to our treasurer's office, who I know um, have, have also been very anxious for this to occur. So I understand there are some funds that are going to have to be um, allocated towards this. But from what I understand, it's, it's a much more efficient result. And I wanted to thank both departments for being open to doing this. Thank you. 
Any other discussion, questions for the sheriff on these three items? Okay, we have- Can I ask a question, um, Chairman? Go ahead, Supervisor Bramer. Thank you. Last year, we had a lot of discussion about Nova Time through our IT department and making sure that we update the technology and have some available. Is, is this um, the Nova Time equipment through the Sheriff's Office not managed at all by the IT department? Is that question for me, Supervisor Bramer? It is, Sheriff, please. We, um, we use the county's program in conjunction with Nova Time and it, it is time consuming, it's complicated. We know that our IT director is going to be leaving. We don't know exactly when, but it's coming. And we want to become self-sufficient on the Nova Time system as soon as possible. We could not completely transition into this until the updates are made and we do some trials and tests. But I, I believe the discussions you're referring to all relate to the direction we're heading. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, we had a motion and a second. All those in favor signify aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. Okay, items, I believe items five and six are related, Sheriff? Sure. Yes, they are both intermunicipal agreements. One is for the town of Horicon and one is for the town of Spruan and Essex County Sheriff's Office. And that's for our Sheriff's Office to provide Marine services, patrol services on Spruan Lake. Terrific. And, and by the way, they do a terrific job. Thank you. For the town, we greatly appreciate their, their efforts to keep our waterways safe. Motion uh, to move this to the floor. Supervisor McDevitt, second. I'll second, but I have a question. Supervisor Driscoll is a second. Question by Supervisor Sieber. Sorry, thank you, Supervisor Driscoll. I didn't mean to beat you to the punch there. It's tough to do that on Zoom to, to see hands. Um, it, may, may I ask a question, Mr. Chair, to our sheriff? Yes, proceed. Um, Sheriff, I see that on these agreements that there are one-year agreements with an option for four one-year extensions upon mutual agreement of both parties. Um, I know that binds our board, one board into another board. Um, is there a reason why it's not an option for two one-year extensions upon mutual agreement um, or, or however that works out to be concurrent with the terms of our boards? Or perhaps that's an answer or a question for our county attorney's office. That was a proposal that I put in knowing that we've had this long standing agreement with these municipalities. We are not going anywhere. We're not going to be increasing the prices. I just thought it would be best to allow for annual renewals extending out as opposed to coming in and asking for new agreements, but we really don't have any preference uh, on which direction to go. Okay, I think, may I, Mr. Chair, to our county attorney then, because it's a legal question, I suppose then, if there was no reason for it from the sheriff's perspective. Supervisor, um, there's there's a difference between binding a board with a governmental decision and a proprietary one. This may fall under a proprietary one. I'd like to discuss the matter further with our county attorney, but it seems to me that it's, it's up to the board's discretion whether they choose to do the, the two-year or the four-year. Thank you. I just, from this supervisor's perspective, would like to be consistent. And I know that many times we have agreements that are well back into to 1998, 2000. I think those are, are very, um, I, I don't think we need to be doing those, but something like this, where we're talking about a five-year agreement, um, I just want to make sure that it's consistent with our other agreements. So however this turns out when it goes to personnel and finance, which I'm, I think it would have to, um, is fine with me, but I would like our county attorney's office to research it to be consistent, if that's agreeable with you, Mr. Chair. Yes, it is. Yes. Thank you. Okay, all right. Since it's contractual, we'll not go to personnel, but we'll certainly have further discussion. Can I just ask a question, Mike? Yeah. Question, I Supervisor just, McDevitt. Yeah, just, a, just an observation and a question. Uh, seems like a fair amount of money just in general terms okay just uh, for to take care of uh, your leg okay you know on the part of a, a very professional organization uh, so i think a fair amount of money uh, secondly uh, uh what would be like a a bad situation that would that, that would occur is it is it people drinking while they're they're on a boat is it uh 
people just acting crazy. Uh, you, uh, you well, I can tell you, certainly the sheriff can respond, but I can tell you from personal experience, living on the lake, um, having recreation opportunities on the lake, and uh, having been in, in law enforcement and waterways, um, it, what you said is, is exactly correct. Um, unreasonable conduct, uh, hazardous conduct, um, you know, drinking, uh, other activity that um, portrays a risk to the general public. So we're very happy to see the sheriff patrol uh, whenever they can, uh, can, you know, obtain the, the right amount of time. The, the, the issue is for the public, they never really know when the sheriff's patrol was there. So even the perspective that they may be here, I think has a lot to do with uh, the conduct um, on a daily basis. Sheriff, you want to add anything at all? No, sir. I mean, you hit it right on the head. It's community policing with a different vehicle and a different medium. Everything that you would think we would do in law enforcement on your highways, we do on the waterways. Crime deterrence, community policing, engagement with the public. Um, we really try to just connect. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay, you thank you. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> okay, Carrie, thank you very much. Uh, item number seven is a training uh, request here. Yes. This is again a new agreement. However, it is a renewal of an existing agreement. We utilize Lexapol for virtual and online training for police and corrections. We've been very satisfied with the services that they provide. They uh, allow us to take our policies, to create tests from those policies so we can quiz our staff. They constantly provide us with updated training on new legislation that's coming out. We found it to be of tremendous benefit. And the price that they quoted us for 2022 is actually $1,664 less than what we were paying for 2021. So we're very pleased with that. Thank you. Motion moved to the floor. Make that motion. <clears throat> Who is it? Oh, yeah. So, uh, Supervisor Fraser, you're not actually on the committee, oh. but. Uh, didn't know that my name was up there, so I assumed I was still there. Yeah, there was a new list uh, published on Friday. Okay. We'll That's make fine. sure we'll get that to you. Thank you. Yes, because I didn't get it. That's fine. We appreciate you being here. So let me uh, ask again for a motion to move this from committee members. I'll make that motion. Supervisor Bramer, second. Supervisor Driscoll, any further discussion, comments, questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Gary. Item number eight is a, a budget transfer um, remaining in the Sheriff's 911 Center from 2021 budget to fiscal year 2022. Sure. We have a small amount of funds left in our public safety answering point grant. We would rather not leave any money on the table. We're continually working through refreshes and projects in our communication center. Don't have this $731 allocated to anything specifically, but again, we would like to carry it forward. Motion to move it forward. Supervisor Triscoll, second. Supervisor McDevitt, any discussion, questions? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Item number nine is approval for four full-time contingent permanent civil service correction officer positions, sure. It's kind of a technical request. We have 76 full-time board approved correction officer positions in our table of organization. At any given time, we will have two, three, or four of those members out on active duty military orders. While they're out on orders, they're not receiving their salary from the sheriff's office. However, they, they are that slot is encumbered, so we cannot count them towards our staffing. We have talked for a couple of years now with the personnel officer, Trish Neninger, and collectively we came up with this proposal in that we would have four additional, they're not active positions, they don't in increase our strength, contingent positions that we could utilize without specific board approval, similar to the full-time correction officers, to, in an essence, backfill these vacancies. They would be contingent on the vacancy remaining. So if, for example, I was leaving January 1st and I had orders for all of 2022, we could hire somebody off the list on a contingent permanent basis and have them working through the year. 
without fail, there will be another vacancy through 2022. So the advantage is we get kind of an advanced look at some of these um, new hires. And if we like them, we could slide them right into a full-time permanent position, hire another contingent. If something happened with my military orders and I returned in June, anyone that is in a contingent slot that is held would have to vacate that position. So there's no additional funding that we're requesting. It's just going to help to relieve some of the hardships that we occur that occur in our correctional facility with staffing. Okay, motion. Supervisor McDevitt, second. Supervisor Driscoll, any discussion, questions, comments? Mr. Chair, I have a question. Supervisor Fieber. Thank you. I'm, I'm not sure who I should direct this to. So if you, um, Chair Jirasi, would, would direct it to the appropriate person. I have two questions. One, does this change out of our uh, resolution that we just passed this week for our standing rules, the number of correction officers that is, they're set at 75. Um, so if I'm understanding the proposal, it, it works like a, almost like a pool position they, they would just be drawing from, but wouldn't wouldn't increase the budget and wouldn't increase the number of full-time positions on our standing rules? That would be my first question. Is that correct? Sure. I don't believe that it would. It, de it definitely would not have an impact on the budget. As stated, the, the person who is out on military orders is not receiving their salary. So a person coming in, it would actually probably be less than the person who was out on orders. So it wouldn't have an adverse impact on our budget. As far as the, the standing rules and the number and the strength, it's my understanding in speaking with the personnel officer that this would not have any impact on our table of organization and would not, but I, I don't want to misspeak. Okay, so, so that would stay at 75 corrections officers then? Is that the correct number? I believe it's 76. In 2020, there were 75. We had an inspector's position that was I don't know if the proper word is dissolved or transitioned, removed, and another correction officer position was created. So is it 76 then that shows on our current standing rules? Um, who, who, who do I ask that question to? I'm not sure if that would be the clerk of the board or if that would be um, Jackie Figueroa. I, I know that we have 76 positions. I keep track of all of our positions. I know that we have approval for 76, but it, to verify it, I'm not sure which department you would check. Thanks. County Administrator Moore, can you answer that for me? Uh, yes, we will. We will check it out. And if there is a discrepancy, we'll fix it. Well, we just passed it the other day, right? I just can't find my current. I see the ones I wrote all over. I just can't find the current ones. I don't know if the, the modified version came out yet after our board meeting, but I know we didn't touch that section at all. Yeah, it says 75 right now. So I, okay. So if it is supposed to be 76, then I assume we're going to go through, maybe we should need to make a motion to amend this to move on to the full board because the standing rules will need to be amended if that's the case. Or of course you can bring that through personnel. My second question then is we won't need a two thirds then to approve these four full-time contingent permanent civil service correction positions. I assume Trish approved that language. She did, and she offered to speak and assist with the presentation. I'm confident if you would like her to come in at personnel, she'd be more than happy to, to explain with a little more clarity. Yeah, no, I think maybe at personnel, that's a great um, idea, Sheriff. And by personnel, Administrator Moore, can we have those two questions answered about the 75 versus 76 and the two thirds? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheriff. Yes. Other questions? I have a question for the sheriff as well. Supervisor Bramer. But I'll just make it twofold while I have the floor. Thank you. I guess, what, Sheriff, what is our current census at the jail? And is has there been any movement on the legislative side or on the part of docs changing the rules regarding the number of corrections officers we have to have? Are you, by census, do you mean staffing? No, I mean inmates. Um, our population as of this morning is 100. We have beds if we double bunk and are really overfilled to, to house 184. 100 is it's a little uncomfortable as far as the population goes. We've been staying pretty steady. 
the legislation as far as the Commission of Corrections and any revisions to the staffing analysis that are conducted or determinations on facility staffing. We follow them through the Sheriff's Association and I do not believe any decision has been made at this point. I guess what I was trying to get at too is whether or not we still need the full staffing of the 75 or 76. Um, actually, we need more. I don't come in and ask for more because of the response that you just provided. Um, you know, it, it's posts, it's people, they're human beings. And mm -hmm. we have 76, we have officers who come to work and they get injured. Everything in a, in a correctional facility is steel and concrete. And while they're injured, they're out for long periods of time. And during that time, they cannot count for our staffing and then we're not replacing them. My request today is not so much for our organization, for our administration, for me as sheriff, for the people that I work with. It's to offer them a little bit of relief. Thank you, Sheriff. Any other questions? All right, this item as well as the next uh, five, it will all be um, reviewed by personnel as well. So we have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor, signify aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, item number 10 is create a new position, which is patrol sergeant number 12. In our civil office for a number of years, we've been working in a direction to phase out civil law enforcement officers and have the positions filled with patrol officers and a patrol sergeant. This is the final step in that phase during the November meeting. We received approval. There's a retirement that's forthcoming for the civil law enforcement officer and that's going to be filled with the patrol officer. This is a request for patrol officer number 12. We actually only have 10, or sorry, patrol sergeant number 12. We actually have 10 patrol sergeants in our strength, but sometimes in the past, when there, a vacancy occurred, a new number was created, so it's a little deceiving. This specific patrol sergeant's primary functions would be working as a supervisor in the civil law enforcement office, but the benefit for us is when we have large events, when we have a vacancy on the road patrol, this sergeant's also trained to serve as a shift commander with the road patrol to come out and be a shift supervisor at Americade Balloon Fest, where the civil law enforcement officer or sergeant could not perform those functions. The effect to our budget, it's $6,457 more, but when we made the change and nothing changed with the adopted budget, budget that I'm aware of, and went from civil law, law enforcement officer number two to patrol officer, I believe 67 or whatever was created, there was a savings there of $24,194. So the actual difference between those two positions is still a savings of $17,737. So we're not asking for any more money with this new position. And we are eliminating a position. Any other questions? Supervisor Sieber. Um, did you bring a motion on the floor to, to discuss or am I? behind it, oh we no we do not have a motion at this time yep i'm happy to make the motion but i will have a question all right we have a motion by supervisor sieber second supervisor mcdavid go ahead with the question thank you chairman uh, may i direct it to the sheriff yes please Sheriff, I heard you talk about phasing out the sergeant of the civil law enforcement due to the cross-training um, benefits of, uh, <clears throat> but I, I guess I'm not fully understanding why the phase out is happening. I'm just not judging it. I'm just looking for an educational piece on, on why this is advantageous. Of course, we're just looking to get a little more bang for our buck. The civil law enforcement sergeant, He's retiring after 45 years, but his area of expertise is civil law enforcement. He supervises an office of five employees, including himself. And the way that it was aligned, it's a little bit pigeonholed. If we have a patrol sergeant in that position, the patrol sergeant who'll be promoted, he's been a patrol officer with our agency for over 20 years. He would, um, he's been in our civil office for six years. So he's got experience serving civil process, which is very technical and very complicated. So he can assist with service, he can supervise the small office, and he can come out of that office, and he will quite often, to serve and assist on the road patrol as needed. So that sergeant's gonna be wearing multiple hats, and it's, it helps us. And, and a follow-up, Mr. Chair, if I may. Go ahead. 
Um, the sar the sergeant to civil law enforcement. When did you say he retired or will be retiring? This week. This week. So um, after his retirement, it sounds like perhaps that then would correspond with our board meeting in February. Uh, should we also have a motion somewhere on here to put forward a resolution to delete that position from the table of organization? And many times I know in so many different departments where we intend on deleting those positions, but they stay in budgets, uh, not deleted, but unfunded. Um, and that was something I know we were working hard to make sure that when our intent was to delete a position that we actually do that. Um, perhaps that's a question for the county administrator to see if we could get that on the personnel agenda. It, it's in the resolution request. So it's a dual. It will delete the position and the, the next resolution. Yeah, the next res resolution number ten, or request number ten. But that would be effective then and when February after our February board meeting. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Then I would change my motion to to my motion to approve ten and eleven at the same time. All right, so we're we may have a motion for request number 10 and 11. We have a second. Second, Supervisor McDaggett. Uh, any other questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, request number. 12 is the field patrol officer number 62, Sheriff? Sure. Yes, this would be a request to fill the position of the patrol officer who is working in civil that we anticipate with board approval will be promoted following the February full board meeting. Okay. Motion by Supervisor Driscoll. Second. Supervisor McDevitt, any discussion, questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item number 13 is Phil Communications Officer number 20. Yes, we have our communications officer who resigned from his position. He has started the Zone 5 Law Enforcement Police Academy as a patrol officer. His first day in the academy is this morning. So his switch into patrol has created a vacancy, and we're just asking to fill that vacancy. Motion to move it. Supervisor McDevitt, second. Second. Supervisor Bramer, any discussion, questions? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Vote. Aye. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Um, request number 14, Phil Senior Communication Officer number three. We have a gentleman who works currently as a senior communication officer. He is requesting to return back to his last position of communication officer that's going to create a vacancy. We have a list of eligible candidates and we would like to appoint, hire a new senior communication officer. Motion to move it. Supervisor McDevitt, second Supervisor Driscoll. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor, aye. 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 Carry. And Request number 15, extend an agreement with Justice Benefits Incorporated for three additional years. Sure. Yes. I know I've spoken at prior meetings about SCAP. That's the Bureau of Justice Assistance State Criminal Alien Assistance Program. They provide funding for our county correctional facility to house certain illegal uh, illegal inmates. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> illegal um, the words escaping me, criminal illegal aliens. We're not housing them for violations of not being citizens of the United States, but they have committed other crimes during their time with us because of their status. We can be reimbursed for their being housed with us. This organization, this business researches, finds these money, tells us exactly what money we're entitled to and takes a small percentage for doing so. And speaking with our corrections captain, it is a tremendous benefit. And this is the funding that we utilized last year, though we still haven't been able to get it yet, to purchase the handicap accessible van for our correctional facility. This is just a request to extend our agreement with them for three years. Thank you. Motion to move this request forward. 
Supervisor Driscoll. A question. Oh, question. Yeah. No, uh, go okay. ahead. Yeah. Get the motion. Are you making a motion? Yes, I am. Okay. Second. Supervisor McDavid on the question. Supervisor Driscoll. Thank you, Chairman. I, I was just interested. Does this include um, like translation services when necessary, or, or how does that work, uh, Sheriff? No, this is just purely reimbursement for us for housing. Okay. There are times when okay. reimbursement for um, correction officer salaries, for okay. food Good. meals. Okay. Yeah. That's another issue. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? On this I side? have a question too, Chair, Chairman. Supervisor Brammer, go ahead. Thank, thank you. Sheriff, how many of these do we have as inmate? How many of these uh, people of this category? I did not check before I came in. It does not happen very frequently, but the rate of reimbursement when it does, when you're thinking of a corrections officer salary 24 seven, um, this agency does all the research and they tell us exactly what we need. Um, again, I, I met with our corrections captain. I also researched it with the Sheriff's Association. This organization does this type of work for most of the sheriff's offices across New York state at least. And uh, as far as you know, these inmates coming and going, I, I'm not certain, Supervisor Bramer. Okay, I'm just, what is the service exactly for? Are they recruiting these inmates to be placed with us? Is that what is no, happening? It just so happens if somebody was arrested for a burglary in Glens Falls and it's based upon their status as citizens in the United States, it's an automatic trigger based upon the boxes that are checked and we are reimbursed for their housing, not for them being an illegal alien, strictly for the crimes that they committed after they're convicted or do they not even go through that process? The entire time that they are here with us, the conviction or any of that has no bearing on our reimbursement. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Supervisor Leggett. No, th thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if this has anything to do with the um, bail reform and, and um, justice reform that happened a couple of years ago. Is this a new service perhaps that we are providing for that? No, SCAP has been around for a number of years. We maintain a fund and the only request or the requirement is that any of the funding that we utilize has to go back towards the facilities for the inmates. So again, last year we were purchasing a handicap accessible van and in years past it might be equipment for the inmates for recreation. So it's reimbursement for them being housed and then going right back to the inmates for their benefit during their time of incarceration. Yeah. And I'm surprised like it. And la last year, the Sheriff's Office Correction Department brought in a lot of money for their federal um, beds they provide. Is this included under that line item as well? Completely different. This is something completely different. If you take the agenda, I think the easiest and clearest way, and you just Google this name, SCAP, it, there's a quick overview that would explain everything much clearer than I'm doing today. Anyone else? Okay, motion has been uh, made. Second it. All those in favor, signify aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to abstain. Uh, while I understand the, the need for the reimbursement, I just don't understand the program well enough, and I'm going to abstain for right now. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> so recorded. I believe that's the last uh, of the request items. Uh, discussion items, there's three issues. The first one is digital civil fingerprint processing for pistol permits. <laughs> yes. Late 2020, we started having conversations with the Board of Supervisors, making presentations about using our digital fingerprint stations <laughs> for civil fingerprint processing. We reached out to DCGS. We had the capabilities. There was a software update that would allow us to take these prints in and we started the presentation of proposal. We were starting with the, the walk phase where we were just going to do Warren County pistol permit applicants and have them come to our office to do digital fingerprinting with the understanding that we would then transition into teachers, nurses, state liquor licenses and having people come to our station for those. We were headed in a clear direction and in November of last year, we learned that we lack the authorization, it would have to be a statewide transition to take over state liquor license fingerprinting, school teacher fingerprinting. So it leaves us essentially with county fingerprinting. 
And for us, with the, we would then be required and responsible for any software updates. The benefits we have viewed do not outweigh the expenses and the requirements that would be put upon our Sheriff's Office. Washington County Sheriff's Office, Saratoga County Sheriff's Office, they both provide this service to their residents. But in those counties, the Sheriff's Office have full oversight over pistol permit processing. They receive the applications, they complete the background processing, they send the applications back out, they do everything. So all expenses, all proceeds go through the Sheriff's Office. We're not looking to do that. We don't wanna take it away from the clerk's office. They do an exemplary job, but for us to step into this role, it would actually cause an expense for the county. We, want, we don't wanna do that. So we're stepping away. This is just an update for all of you to let you know that we looked at it and by the time we were getting ready to enter into an agreement with the Division of Criminal Justice Services, additional information was provided that caused us to, to realize it's not going to be beneficial. Any questions on this discussion item? Supervisor Sieber. Thank you. Um, if I can direct it to the sheriff, I, I just have a couple of quick questions on this one. Go right ahead. Thank you, Sheriff. Was this the, I remember we had extensive discussions about bringing on board a position to do, do, do the fingerprinting in-house. Did we ever approve and bring on that position or you're saying you're back, you're, you're saying no, at this point, it doesn't make sense to even have that in-house. Right, you did make an approval. We got the notice of intent to fill that was signed and authorized. That expired, we requested a renewal. Um, that renewal was made, that will expire this year. We have not filled and we do not intend to fill that position. Okay, thank you for refreshing my memory on it. I know it, it was a lot of discussion around it. Can we then, if it expires, do we need to do anything just to delete what we previously approved or does it just expire and go away forever? I know any notice of intent that I have that expires, I can't utilize to fill the vacancy. I would think it would be safe to say that upon the expiration, I wouldn't be, I would, I would lack the authorization to fill that position, but I will tell you, we're not, we're not going to fill that part-time position. So I guess I would just ask our county administrator to go through whatever process to delete that position um, in the same way that we just did the other um, deletion, you know, when you created the, the additional position there. But my, uh, my question that goes with that, Sheriff, is as we've brought on new positions, new hires, I've often asked about background checks. And it's my understanding we go out for those. I don't know if that also means we go out for the fingerprinting. Is there a way to coordinate with our sheriff's office for those backgrounds to be done internally to save save some money? Um, you know, I, I've gotten a few different answers on that. I don't really know where we stand right now, but some counties I know will do them in-house, others, others do not. Um, I just wondered your thoughts on it. The background investigations that are conducted for the sheriff's office, there's two. There's the new hire background investigation that our criminal investigators will take on. It's uh, very intense. It, it takes a lot of their time away from criminal investigations. The uh, sergeant of sure. the unit assigned those sure. I'm I'm so sorry. I'm just going to save you answering this part of it because I think my question was confusing. I'm not talking about your employees. I'm saying like when we brought on the county attorney and when we bring on a new public defender, when we bring on a department head or someone that we're hiring, those quick quick background checks, not, not law enforcement officers. I, I think the best thing to do is to stay with this. You're just looking to send out a, a query for a fingerprint and to get a response from the New York State and federal database to ensure that there is no criminal background or no no crimes committed in their background. If that's all you're looking for, you would continue to use the outside private service. But a background okay. investigation is completely different than just that fingerprint in inquiry. Okay, thanks. Yes. Any other questions, comments? Administrator Moore? Uh, yeah, just on the, on the piece with the fingerprint position, is that a position that, that you would propose to delete from your organizational structure? Yes. Okay, uh, would, would we like to move that today? I'd be fine with that. Um, I'll make that motion to delete the position of the fingerprinting person. I'll second that. All right, the motion by Supervisor Bramer, second by Supervisor Sieber. Any further discussion or questions on this? All those in favor signify aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Next discussion item is the Lake George substation. Yes, with this item, for all of you as supervisors, I want to personally apologize. This is something that came out in the media. 
And you should not hear of something like this from the media before you hear it from me. Um, there was a request for an interview. And uh, this is, we've not had a home in Lake George for far too long. And for the past three years, the undersheriff and I, three years for me, two years for the undersheriff, we've been talking with the mayor, talking with Supervisor Dickinson about trying to get a home in Lake George again, whether it's in the town or the village, to establish roots. We all know that from May till the end of car show, we spend a lot of time in the town of Lake George. And with that, anytime we have an arrest, they have to go, the officers have to go north or south for processing. And if they needed to take a break, there's no station for them to utilize in Lake George. And more importantly, Lake George Village, much like some of yours, they don't have the, the permanent officers who are assigned like they used to. And to make that connection, if we had four or six officers who were assigned out of a substation, that would be a tremendous benefit for the community. So the mayor and I had been talking and he had, he has proposed a few locations for us to take a look at. The first couple we would not be agreeable to. If we're going to do this, we'll take our time. We're going to do it right. We want to have not just the building, but the location to be beneficial for the public and for our sheriff's office. There was one location that was proposed on a back street in the village around residence. And as you all could assume, sometimes we bring in people that are loud. We're coming and going. And from the time we leave the station, our, our lights and sirens are activated. And that would really be of inconvenience and not really favorable to a residential area. So we're going to hopefully find the proper home. We would like to do this at either at no, preferably, or very limited cost to the county to get into this home. And when we have something tangible, please trust that I will come before all of you and I will make a good presentation. But as of right now, it's it's really just, just discussions. Just a, a quick question. Are you hopeful of having this for this coming summer season? I would love to have it, but I think that would be a really tall order. And you know, we even if we found the home today, as you know, renovating a space, getting us in, it, it would be a lot. Again, I, when we do it, I want to do it right. I want to make sure that the, from the day we turn the key, we're fully operational, not moving in with a live scan fingerprint station that's going to be coming next year, making it a full functioning substation, much like we have in Warrensburg and Chestertown. And, and Sheriff, uh, besides providing the location, the security of that location, the village is willing to handle that as well? Physical in, in, term, in terms of the physical security of the structure i don't think that they would i think it would be just like our other substations you know where we're housed in dpw i don't know that there's any physical security for that location i think having our cars parked there and officers in and out i don't know how much would be necessary but um we want to find a home that is accessible to the public maybe they could walk up and pick up a phone and when it dialed that phone in front of the station it would ring into our communication center one that would not be inconvenient to residents, and one that would be centrally located near the village, if not in the village, to provide us quick access. All right. Questions on this topic? Supervisor Chairman. Driscoll. First. Thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> Sheriff, uh, are we talking about a, a, a six-month operation or a 12-month operation? And if we're talking about a 12-month operation, are the, the number of officers assigned to, to that uh, designation uh, the same as they would be during the uh, the summer months. The it would be a year round operation. We like to have a home year round, and at a minimum, we would have four patrol officers because based upon the twelve hour shifts, that would provide Monday through Sunday coverage for a twenty four hour period, and it would have some continuity of the officers in that location. The number of officers who would be assigned year round would not change. It would have no impact, and if we had more than that, there were officers that were needed in Queensbury or Warrensburg. They're actually closer to go to Warrensburg than they would be if they were working out of Queensbury. So logistically, there are a tremendous amount of benefits. You know, the big thing for us is the location, the layout, and expense. And not just the expense to get in, but what would be the, the recurring expenses of, you know, utilities and things like that. We want to work into an agreement that uh, is not a tremendous burden on county taxpayers. Supervisor Leggett. The, thank you, Mr. Chairman. What, does this cover the zone that goes over to Lake Luzerne as well? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? 
Supervisor Sieber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if I may, again, I'm trying hard to follow Robert's rules to speak through the chair, if I may direct my question to the sheriff. Yes, please. Um, Sheriff, I think it's really important in these discussions to make sure that um, perhaps there's a work group with members of this committee or, or however, I too was a little surprised to read it in the paper and concerned, fielded quite a few questions from people asking about what this would cost to the county taxpayer or would it replace, would, would we be going down a road where now we're talking about replacing the Bolton PD? Or would it look like the Lake George PD used to look? Or, I mean, I think all of these are great concepts and, and certainly support that perspective and that um, drive towards community policing. But I am worried about um, the, the budget aspect of it. And then also other communities feeling as though perhaps they didn't have the same type of response that might also be warranted. So in that light, would it be possible to get a breakdown um, perhaps for a um, comparative breakdown over the last two or three years that would show us the calls in each municipality. And then just a commitment that, you know, each, whether it be a work group or each month that we get an update on what's going on with us so that we are able to be informed as we continue to uh, read about it in the paper and hear about it from constituents. Yes, as I stated, we are, it would be so premature to have a work group. We are not we're not even in, in an infancy stage to have discussions. The only reason that I'm talking about it now is because you did hear about it through the media and that was not the way that we would like to make that proposal. Having a home in Warrensburg does not change the way that the calls are handled in Stony Creek. Having a station in Chestertown does not change the way that calls are handled or our response in Johnsburg. We are simply looking to have a home but not provide any additional resources to the town of Lake George, village of Lake George, town of Lake Luzerne, Nothing in our staffing, nothing in our assignments would be modified in any way. And I agree with you. And as I've stated, we want to make sure that we do this at as minimal cost and, and exposure or lingering expense to the county. That's why we just, we are taking it slow. When I reach a point where we have something worthwhile to present and a proposal to make, I will make that proposal. We can absolutely <coughs> provide you a breakdown of any calls by municipality we could do that month by month, week by week, but it has no bearing on whether or not we have a station in Lake George. We have no interest in becoming the police department for Lake George or Bolton. <coughs> Knowing, and, and Supervisor Garrity's here, we have, we've had a substation in Warrensburg for years, but we're not changing our uniforms to look like a Warrensburg police department. It's a building where we would park cars, have access to a bathroom, have access to computers, an arrest processing location, and officers with a little more, again, continuity to the residents that are in. And I, I misspoke, and I'm glad it was addressed to the residents in Lake George and Lake Luzerne. Uh, may I ask a follow-up, please? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Sheriff, I appreciate that explanation, but if the, de if the decision for a substation in Lake George isn't being made using data, I, I guess I'm wondering if you could just then, again, it, frame for me why the decision is being made to look at it. I, I am familiar with your Warrensburg location. I think it's been helpful, particularly when I've been involved with entering, uh, assisting law enforcement with interviews of, of sex crimes up in that area. And I know that helps people not have to travel as far, um, but it makes me think, what about Johnsburg or what about some other Hague? What about some other areas? Maybe I'm just not as familiar with those different substations that you do have. And, and that might be helpful to, to send out to the committee along with just all I'm looking for is annual data on the number of calls per municipality that might help me understand it. But if that's not what's fueling this decision, perhaps whatever else is fueling it would be helpful. I believe the biggest push for us is it goes right back to everything that we always say. It's community policing. It's having consistency, assigning officers to similar areas. And I've got a number of supervisors who are listening to this meeting. We used to have a small office in a home in Weavertown. If you would like to provide us with an office and a bathroom and a key and a location with a computer. We would love to have a home and a parking lot in every one of your municipalities. The one in Lake George, I can speak firsthand. I carved my teeth in law enforcement starting in 1991 as a 20 year old kid. And I know we need a station in the town and village of Lake George. It is one of our busiest locations. If you go on a large event, which I worked all the large events personally start to finish, there are a lot of police officers who are there and it's not just the big ones that you think of. There's constantly 
a triathlon or some type of an race or a boating event or the firefighters coming into town. And we've been displaced from Lake George for far too long. And I'm not pointing any fingers. They built a new fire station in that they didn't include space for our sheriff's office. And again, I'll say it to all supervisors. If you want to provide us a home in your town, we would love to be part of that home. We may not assign a car and have it used full time like we would like to in Lake George, but we'll utilize it. Thank you very much for that explanation and additional info and for the offer out to, out to the full board. I think that's very helpful. And I hope that the paper also does, you know, that they update that article because it did sound a little misleading. I'm certainly glad that you're discussing it on the record today. Thank you. Supervisor Bramer. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> and I understand what you're saying, Sheriff, about the needs uh, right in the village. And I, I don't want to stand in the way of that uh, taking place as you go forward. I certainly think there needs to be more vetting. I'm glad to hear you're doing that. I know that there are going to be concerns from our city residents. We have a wonderful police department here, and I don't think, you know, there has been talk in the past of consolidation or a substation of the sheriff's office in Glens Falls. I don't think anyone's um, wanting to displace the Glens Falls Police Department, but as you talk about these investments in, our, in other communities, I'm going to get questions about, well, how does that serve Glens Falls and how are we investing back into the Glens Falls PD? because the city residents and taxpayers, as you know, pay for Glens Falls Police Department and they pay for the Sheriff's Office. So I just want that to be, I'm not really directing that at you, Sheriff, but at my fellow supervisors as we make these policy decisions to spend money in other places, how do we also ensure that we are investing back in the Glens Falls PD, if at all possible? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh since this is really early in the process, we'll just have one more comment, Supervisor Driscoll. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I was just that I support the uh, the concept. Um, at your convenience, if if we could also maybe uh, learn about other uh, counties in the capital region and and how they um, address this particular type of uh, need in their communities, uh, I'd like to you know to to see how they do it. Thank okay. you. All right, Sheriff, thank you very much for bringing this to our attention, and we look forward to every month maybe a little update if you, if you have it. Of course. Okay. The last discussion item is a reference to the correctional facility population. You've already addressed this somewhat. If there's any more you want to add to that? I just wanted to touch. You may be hearing of legislation that's coming our way. Um, one is revert as, referred to as HALT, Humane Alternatives to Long-Term Solitary <laughs> Confinement that relates to the segregation or confinement specifically of an inmate in excess of 17 hours per day. We are very purposeful in our use of administrative segregation, confinement of inmates, and we are in front of this. The legislation will take effect uh, April 1st of this year. We plan, we're fine tuning our policies on this right now. We plan to implement this to the fullest by March 1st, so that if there are any bugs or are any things that we're not aware of by working through the process, we'll learn of these before we are in violation of the legislation. But um, if you hear it, we're on board. It's, um, it's nothing that we're opposed to or agreeable to. It's just something you may hear, and I want you to know from me to you, your sheriff's office is in good shape. Another area is MAT, Medication Assisted Treatment. And with this, I know that there have been some emails that have gone with to and from supervisors, from Rob York, from our agency that relate to this and the treatment. There is funding that is available. I believe it's just over $100,000 that will come in and it goes through OASIS. This is something that Rob York and his office will administer. The funding that's provided could be used for groups like ACCA or that's the Office of Addiction Services, and, or um, I'm sorry, Addictions Care Centers of Albany or Baywood locally, the ABLE program, but they cannot be used to fund our providers with prime care because it can only be used for not-for-profit not organizations. There will most definitely be some increases to our budget for prime care, but we, again, we want to make sure we have continuity of care. We are already utilizing a MAP program. The inmates are receiving these services to include methadone. Methadone is a controversial substance in some areas, it, it's up for much discussion, but our providers have been dispensing methadone for quite some time. We have three inmates currently, 
And um, this is another one that we are out in front of. We're having regular meetings to make sure that this should take effect sometime in October, but we are out in front of this as well. A final topic is um, a notice of voter rights. This is something for convicted felons housed in state and local facilities. Upon their release, they have to be notified of their right to vote. And we have to provide them with some documentation, some guidance, and we have, we've already started to do that. That came out, the legislation came out last April. We're out in front of that. So any of these points that you hear about that relate to corrections, again, your facility, they're taking care of it. Thank you, Sheriff. Any questions for the Sheriff on this item? Chairman, I don't have a question on this item, but I do have a, a few other things I was hoping to bring up at the end. Okay. Uh, Supervisor McDevin on this topic? Uh, no, just, uh, just a separate topic. Okay. Nothing else on this item? All right, let me go to Supervisor Bramer then. Thank you so much. Earlier um, in our discussion, Supervisor Leggett brought up the, um, reminded me about criminal reform that was passed not too long ago. So I'm wondering, Sheriff, doesn't need to be today, but if, if it's okay with the chair and the rest of the committee, I would like uh, at some point a presentation from you as an update on the implementation of our criminal reform plan. I know you worked hard on that and got a lot of community involvement and there were some recommendations going forward and some things that you were going to be looking at changing. I know a couple of them were training opportunities and one that was really important to me is um, opportunities for better recruitment of women and minorities. And I'd love to know if you've been able to make any progress on, on those items. Of course. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Another one, Chair, but while I have the floor, if you don't mind, yes, we recently heard, uh, received a report about the, um, from our insurance, the Needham report about the Tony Pitt. And I'm wondering if you can give the committee an update on any um, implementation of the recommendations in that particular report. We're meeting, uh, we have a group with self-insurance, the county administrator, we're meeting this week to go over the recommendations. And uh, we did a, a full investigation. I think all supervisors have been provided that. That was the type of um, incident we are very grateful and thankful that no one was seriously injured. Something that that pit has been utilized for decades and we've never had this type of incident occurred, but we wanna make sure that it cannot occur again. So our hope is that come springtime before we need to get out on the firing line, that we can work with DPW to make those modifications to our firing range to make them safer. And any recommendations, anything that is proposed, we're going to adhere to. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the Needham report had a lot. I don't know, um, Sheriff, that all of the supervisors received the um, preliminary investigations, I'm gonna call them, that the Sheriff's Office performed. So okay. maybe if anyone on the committee is interested, they could reach out to you for that. Sort of thing. Administrator Moore, can you respond? It, yes, yes. Any other supervisors that would like, they're, they're very large files that we can't email, but we do have uh, a, a website. Uh, I think I think you call it an FTP site, uh, where uh, if you're interested in reading the Sheriff's Department's uh, investigation and, and reports on this, uh, just contact me or Christy Miller and we'll get you that login information. Great, thank you. Chairman, just, just one more while I have the floor, if you'll forgive me, um, I'd like to ask for your consideration of the second vice chair for Supervisor Sieber. She is a prior chair of this committee and she actually teaches in the area of criminal justice. So I think she would be great if you haven't already picked someone else. Thank you for that and I, I'm done, thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Brame. I have not selected a second vice chair. As you know, when we started the meeting, I asked for opinions for the vice chair. You heard a, a nomination for Supervisor Sievers for second vice chair. I'll look at the committee. That. Second by Supervisor Driscoll, and I'll ask the committee. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Supervisor Sieber, thank you for your willingness to serve. Well, I um, I actually hadn't accepted uh, or or willingness <laughs> to serve on that, but I appreciate uh, Supervisor <laughs> Bramer's um nomination and and serving third in line on, on the committee I'd, I'd be happy to help in any way that i can thank you supervisor bramer for that consideration and that opportunity chair um at the appropriate time after i believe it's mr mcdevitt i also have a matter for privilege of the floor please well thank you 
It's appreciated. Any other uh, privilege of the floor? Any other comments from any of the supervisors? Anybody online? Any comments? Supervisor Sieber, go ahead. Thank you. I'd like to go back to our discussion about deleting positions. Um, and this is for our county administrator. Uh, county Administrator Moore, would it be possible on a quarterly basis to please provide through personnel the salary schedule where it shows the positions that are deleted? It's my understanding that we don't typically see that until the budget would come out in 2023 and we start those that process or unless we request that report. But I do think it would be a helpful report quarterly to take a, a look at those positions that are deleted because there isn't a specific form. It's just a line on these forms. Um, would that be possible to keep us updated on those, please? Uh, the, that this is actually a technical question that I don't know the answer to. The, the, the salary schedule that gets published in the budget, I don't know whether or not that document is updated in real time or whether it's just done once uh, uh, at, at budget time. Uh, but what we do have are we have the resolution every month that the board passes uh, that authorizes creations and deletions. Uh, and maybe that's a better way to track it with, with a lot less paper to look at is we could just bind all of those together and uh, uh, provide that as a report. That would be helpful just as long as it reflects the positions that were approved to be deleted and that they're, I know in the past we've, we've come into hiccups with this. So that would be helpful if you wouldn't mind making sure that that's distributed to us. Sure, sure. I'll, um, I'll, I'll have that included in the personnel agenda every month. Thanks. My, my other matter for privilege of the floor um, would just be to our chairman of criminal justice. I assume as chair of criminal justice, you'll be involved in that discussion as it relates to um, the, re the reports that were referenced by the sheriff and by Needham and those recommendations. Is, is that a safe assumption, Chairman Jirasi? Yes, it is. Uh, and you'll update the committee. Say it again, please. I assume you'll update the committee accordingly regarding any any steps that are taking as a result of that. Yes, certainly. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Good. Any other discussion? If not, sure. Thank you much very much for your time. We'll accept the motion to adjourn. This, oh, Do we sorry. have another? Yep. <laughs> Step ahead. Uh, we'll move to emergency services. Anne Marie. All right, the uh, first request is a resolution request to amend the 2022 budget. Amory? Yep, it's to accommodate anticipated revenue from the FY19 State Homeland Security grant in the amount of $469.60. Uh, the rationale is the resolution is needed to carry over budget grant revenue from 2021. The associated appropriation is taken care of through a purchase order carryover process. Motion. Supervisor Driscoll, second. Supervisor McDeggett, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item two, another uh, budget related item. Yes. Amber? The resolution requests to amend the 2022 budget to accommodate the FY20 State Homeland Security grant in the amount of $52,995. The rationale is resolution needed to carry over grant funds from 2021 to commence the purchasing process. Chairman, I'll move that one and three, two and three, carrying over funds. Repeat that, please. I said I would move items number two and three, which both relate to carrying over grant funds from okay. 2021. Good. Sorry, I missed it. A second? No second. Problem. Mr. Driscoll? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 First, we'll move to item number four request to apply for the fiscal year 22 State Homeland Security Program grant in the amount not to exceed $100,000. Anne Marie? Yep. So, this grant guidance is typically released in the first quarter, and we anticipate a compressed application period. So we want to get our request out there ahead of time so that way sometimes the state will give us sometimes 21 days to get an application in. We just want to get ahead of that and uh, ask for approval to apply for that. Okay. Motion? 
Supervisor McDevitt, second. Second. Supervisor Bramer. Thank you for getting out in front of this. Any discussion? Supervisor Sieber, you have a question? Yeah, I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. If I may address our emergency director. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Anne-Marie, my question here is, is obviously now we're approving something that we don't have in front of us, a, a contract for application. Typically, is there a grant matching dollar for this, whether it be in-kind or third party? And could you still provide us with a grant application when it does come out? So I, I, I'm not inclined to, to approve, or at least yeah, I'm sure it will go through the board, but I'm not inclined to approve something before I even see what the requirements would be. Sure, um, I would definitely make sure that you received a copy of the application and any of the grant guidance that went along with it, absolutely. Um, and in this one, I do not believe we have a match on this one. May I then as a follow-up, Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Anne Marie, I don't want you to think I'm being disrespectful abstaining from this, but until we have more information, knowing what that grant um, allocation may be that would require county dollars, I'm gonna abstain. Okay. Okay, we had a motion by Supervisor McDevitt, second by Supervisor Bramer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained. Abstained? Okay. Next is a resolution to request to apply for fiscal year 22 local emergency management performance grant not to exceed $35,000. Who's this application to? This application is also a state grant. Okay, go ahead. So this is a 50-50 grant that covers a portion of the salary and fringe of the emergency services coordinator. Motion move it. I, I'll make that motion and I have a question when you're ready. Okay, Supervisor Raymer, second. Supervisor Driscoll on the discussion question. Go ahead, Supervisor Bramer. Thank you, Chairman. Anne Marie, it looks like according to the resolution request, we don't need a budget amendment. Is that because the 50% on our side is already budgeted? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank aye. you. The next item is a request uh, to apply for fiscal year 22 hazardous material emergency preparedness grant. In the amount not to see ten thousand dollars, Amory. Okay, so the rationale for this is the purpose of this grant is to conduct hazardous materials planning and training. <clears throat> There's a twenty-five percent local match in which existing budgetary items can be used, such as salaries, travel, office supplies, anything of that nature. Motion. Supervisor McDevitt, second. Supervisor Driscoll. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor, signify aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Next is a request for a new contract with Tollway LLC for heavy towing services at a rate of $200 per hour, not to exceed $5,000 per year. Amory? Sure. So this request is needed for towing services for um, some of our larger vehicles that we have. Um, one of them being the mobile command unit, which did indeed need to um, be towed at some point last year. Um, the contract shall commence upon execution and expire on December 31st of 2022 with the possibility of two annual extensions and no additional funds are needed at this time. Thank you. Motion to move forward. Supervisor Driscoll, second. Supervisor, oh. that's okay. Question? Sure, yes. I just have a question. It's a little off the wall, Anne Marie. We learned last year that there was a boat in Hudson River. Is it possible for these towing services to be used to get that boat out of the river? We've been told that DPW doesn't have the services and um, the state has been unresponsive. I have worked uh, to bring this concern to Assemblyman Simpson's office and there hasn't been any uh, uh, legit actual movement of the boat yet. Um, that's a good question, but I am definitely going to have to check into that with Towaway to see if that's something that they could accommodate. Okay, thanks. Okay. 
Supervisor Driscoll, a question? Thank you, Chairman. If um, if we've budgeted $5,000 and, and we don't use that, is that just rolled over into the next program year? It, to read it, more it, it would depend on whether it would depend on whether there's a purchase order that's in if if the money is encumbered in the financial system it'll automatically roll if not uh and it's not spent there would have to be a budget amendment at the beginning of the following year okay great thanks any other questions all those in favor aye aye and closed okay Item number eight is a resolution request to amend resolution 133 of 2021 and number 325 of 2021, which appointed members of the Warren County Fire Advisory Board for the term 5121 to 43022. Anne-Marie? Sure, so um, we're requesting this so we can add the Warren County Fire Coordinator, Ralph Bartlett. Um, we also would like to add uh, Chief Greg Novotarski, Novotarski from Lake Luzerne. Um, Lake George Fire Chief Brandon Combs we'd like to add as well and we do need to make um, two removals um, from Luzerne Hadley Chief Ted Backus and former Lake George Chief Scott Smith. Motion to move it. Supervisor McDevitt second. Supervisor Driscoll any discussion questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carry. Number nine, resolution to increase the 2022 salary of Scott Purdy, a building maintenance helper, by 3% from 5279 to $5,437. Emory? Sure. Um, we're requesting a 3% increase as his salary was not automatically incremented as an out of unit employee. Um, the increase would be effective January 1st of 2022. Okay. Motion by Supervisor Driscoll, second. Supervisor McDevitt, any discussion? I have a question, Supervi or Chairman. Supervisor Sieber, go ahead. Thank you. Um, it, it, could you just explain a little bit more why, I, I guess I'm not understanding this, it wasn't, why does the salary change have to be made? Sure, so um, he, he was actually overlooked during the process um, at budget time. So we are looking to make sure that uh, we pick him up at this point. I, I don't understand what you mean by overlooked. Um, well, I guess it has to do that it wasn't automatically incremented um, due to the fact that he is an out of unit employee. Um, there may have been an assumption that it would have been an automatic increase. Administrator Moore. Yeah. The for union employees automatically get the uh, cost of living adjustment that's in the contract. With out of unit employees, we actually have to manually do it. Uh, uh, that's part of the budget process uh, where we make uh, amendments to the salary schedule. And th this position, unfortunately, was just missed. It, it, it was not. It was not in the initial group that that we were tracking. There, we must have run a report at some point, and this position didn't come up on that report. Uh, so we missed it. Uh, so the uh, we we knew we're, we realized that we did it uh, what, a few weeks ago, and uh, we're amending that now to do the three percent for this position that all the other uh, out of unit positions got. Okay. May I just? Ask the administrator more than a question. Yes, go ahead. I take it then you you ran a new report then with ever is he the only person or is this the only position that was missed? Are we confident now? Yeah, we believe this is the only position. Thank you, Supervisor Bramer. Thank you, Anne Marie. This salary is very low. What is this person doing? That's only five thousand dollars. And my second question is. Do we need to go into executive session to discuss the performance of this person prior to giving a raise? So um, the person holds a position of, um, he's an, a maintenance helper and he mainly focuses, pretty much solely focuses on the upkeep to the um, fire training center. Administrator Moore? I'll address the executive session piece. Uh, I would say no, because this is not, it has nothing to do with performance. This is the 3% cost of living adjustment that, that went to every not out of unit position. Ryan, let me just, or Chairman, is this an 
um, actual employee position or is this some sort of contractor type? I mean, I just wonder why we have one person at $5,000 doing maintenance on that building. We'll advise in a minute. Okay. While Administrator Moore is looking that up, are there any other questions on this? I want to I want to say that the answer to that question I believe is this it's 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 more like a it's more like a stipend. Uh, we we have Emory. I'm just struggling here to find your sure. division. What what number is um, your division? Well, this position is paid quarterly, similar to the um, right. EMS deputies and the EMS um, the fire deputies as well. Okay, so those did all of those positions get this three percent increase as well on their whatever their stipends are, the six thousand or I can't remember, maybe it's twelve thousand now. Yes, they did get the three percent. Thank you. Is that sufficient response? Supervisor Bramer? That's fine for now. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, no, did you have an additional no. question? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. The last item is a request for transfer of funds from various accounts. The total transfer requested is $170.10, Amber. So this uh, transfer is uh, requested to cover the additional salary and fringe expense as a result of the previous item number nine, increasing the salary of the OES building maintenance helper. Motion to move it. Supervisor Driscoll. Second. Supervisor McDevitt. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Sorry. Thank you. If there are no uh, further discussion items or Aye. pending items. Any? I actually would like to add a very late entry discussion item. Um, and it was due to receiving a grant award notice at the end of last week. It was um, too difficult to get it onto the agenda. That's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so we finally got grant award notice from FEMA to start working on the hazard mitigation plan update. Our current plan expires July 20th, July 2022. Um, the contractor that we will be using for this has requested the use of a subcontractor to help with completing this update on time. Um, in the way the current contract states that the contractor would need approval from Warren County to allow them to use a subcontractor. So that's kind of what I'm uh, looking for to see if we need a resolution to have something like this go through or what actually would be our next step. Anyone want to make a resolution to move this forward? I, I'm not making the resolution, I just have a question. Go ahead, Supervisor Sieber. Thanks. Does this have to be done today, Emory? Um, it will put us that much further behind if we don't. I'm trying to see if we can get ahead of this. Um, the state and FEMA were delayed in getting the award notices out. So it kind of delayed not just, um, you know, maybe our municipality, but others as well um, in getting that their plan updates done by July of 2022. Um, usually these are a pretty long process to go through updating the hazard mitigation plan. It would require us to meet with all of the towns that have any updates that need to be done for the plan. Just as a follow-up, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Repeat that, please. As a follow-up, may I ask a follow-up? Yes, go ahead. ahead. Thank you. Anne-Marie, is it possible so that legal has an opportunity to look at this, to put it through personnel? I mean, I'm not going to vote on this one today. I, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, about seeing something. I don't know why it was difficult to get it on the agenda, but if you say it was, I believe obviously that it was. And I'm glad that you got the grant award notice at the end of last year, but um, I would feel better knowing legal took a look at this as well. All right. So we got this award notice late, I think Thursday or Friday afternoon of last week. Um, and this particular project, the grant funding that we received, it's $120,000. Federal share is 90,000 and non-federal match is 30,000.
Anyone would like to proceed with the resolution? I'm fine with it. Supervisor McDevitt, second. Supervisor. No, just, just clarification, uh, okay. what we're, we're voting on or. Uh, uh, that's we, my question too. To, to move it to um, the, no, the uh, February, Third meeting of, of personnel. Is that going to work in your time frame? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll second that. Uh, moving it to uh, personnel. personnel committee. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Second by Supervisor Driscoll. Any further discussion? Supervisor Thomas. I'll try to uh, provide a little clarification. Uh, at this is a hazard mitigation uh, plan update. And uh, every five years, uh, Warren County and all the towns are required to update their hazard mitigation plans. This is, uh, was done last time through uh, Jim Lieberum at Soil and Water, who is our hazard mit mitigation coordinator. And last time we had a grant, approximately these same numbers here. And uh, that helped, that, that paid for a contractor. Uh, I forget the name of the contractor. Uh, but anyhow, it paid for the contractor to help update these uh, plans. Thank you. Any other questions, discussion? Supervisor Sieber. Just as a follow-up to Supervisor Thomas, if there, if this was done by soil and water before, why is it going through Anne Marie now? So I follow that right? Supervisor, Supervisor Thomas. Uh, this doesn't go through soil and water. Uh, Mr. Liebrum is, is works is a, is the uh, hazard mitigation coordinator for the county. That's why it's okay. in, in Marie's office. Tammy, we have a follow up. Sure. Um, just to add a little bit of clarification. Um, so the end of last week, um, Soil and Water had did apply for the grant. They received word as Anne Marie said the end of last week. Jim Lieberum has reached out to the Department of Homeland Security to get Warren County add as a co-recipient of the grant funding um, because Soil and Water on our behalf applied for the grant as was done in the previous grant five years ago. Um, and the vendor, we were talking about the vendor that we used last time was Tetra Tech. Now we're using Contingency Management Corporation in that bid document, they do have the ability to do the hazard mitigation plan. Um, and in their contract, it does talk about subcontracting. The county attorney's office is aware and they were looking at this late last week to kind of go through and, and help Anne Marie. She, like she said, she's just trying to get out in front of it. Thank you. Any other questions? questions? Supervisor Bramer. Thank you. I, I'm still just not quite clear. This is not something that was on our agenda because it was a late breaking item, but could someone just reiterate to me exactly what the motion is that was made? The motion was to, go ahead, Emery. Sure, so, so it would be to have the county approve our current contractor to be able to use a subcontractor. And who, who and who not Tetra Tech, this new one? Sure. So the contractor right now is Contingency Management Consulting Group, and Tetra Tech has approached them to see if they could be used as a subcontractor. Um, and I think, you know, in our interest, it would probably definitely help us get this completed before the expiration of the current plan. So that's, that's the sole action being requested of us today, authorizing the use of a subcontractor. The use of Tetra Tech. Correct. For what was the service again? It's for the hazard mitigation plan update. And just to confirm, the, the motion that Supervisor McDevitt and, uh, made and Supervisor Driscoll second was to move this issue to the personnel committee, I believe, on February 3rd. That, oh, that, okay. okay. That, that's the motion. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor of moving this forward? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Emery, thank you. Uh, and Emery, thank you on behalf of all of us. Thank you for your continued work with 
with COVID issues, especially distribution and acquisition distribution of the test kits and masks. I know that all of us are appreciative, but even more importantly is the people that we serve are very appreciative. So yep. thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Accept a motion to adjourn. Supervisor McDevitt, second. Second. Supervisor Bramer, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much for your patience and everyone.